What's up, everybody? It's Pastor G. I am in the house. It's Wednesday. It's Wednesday. It's Wednesday. This is August 1st. Wednesday, August 1st. Now, I am very excited about that. And I'm going to tell you why. I'm going to tell you why. August is, in fact, the month of excitement. I want you to be excited this month. Why? Let me tell you why. I'll tell you why I want you to be excited is because i hope you guys can see me all right i'm back i'm back i hope i hope you guys can see me i hope you guys can see me august 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 this is august this is august stay with me now and also pray for my phone because it's it's sometimes it does its own thing but anyways here's the good news i want you to know, i want to speak this into somebody's life that is listening to me i'm i'm fixing my phone so don't go nowhere don't go nowhere if it if it's if it if it uh, pauses for a minute i'm still here now this is august i need you to hear this this is a month for excitement why because there's something that is coming down if you will the pipe for you this is the month that things are going to manifest august is the month of manifestations for you i want you to prepare yourself prep yourself and, and 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 raise your expectations let your faith ride this month because this is the month of manifestation if you're hearing me i want i want you to i want you to let this sink into your spirit this is the month of your manifestation august is the month this is a month of excitement be very careful that your enemy don't try to rob you of your moment with stress and things like that august is the month of expectation there's great things that are happening and in this month please hear this now let me give you a spiritual rule and law you can never have what you speak against watch your mouth this month don't speak against don't speak contrary to the faith that God has developed in you. He's going to manifest this month. August is the month of manifestation. I'm so excited about that. Somebody need to hear that. You've been struggling. You've been struggling. You've been struggling. But this is the month of manifestation. Don't you dare change your confession under pressure. Hold on. This is your month. I am thankful for that. I had to start off by saying that this is the month of manifestation. You've been waiting and it is here. Hold on. Hold on. Don't you give up. Don't you give up. You know, there's an old saying that your darkest hour is just before the breaking of the day. Yes, your darkest hour. So it might be very dark right now. So don't give up. There's a rule in that as well. Uh, 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 let us not be weary in well-doing. Watch this. Let us not be weary in well-doing. For in due season, you will reap if you faint not in other words there can be a harvest that's available that you don't get because you faint before you receive don't faint don't relent keep it moving keep it moving because it will happen for you this is the month that it will happen for you and you need to say that out of your mouth because your mouth is your weapon of choice it allows things to manifest in your life if you say it you can see it but you got to say it you got to speak uh, words of faith that defy your current situation and watch august is the month of manifestation that's just i knew i had to say that to somebody before we got started you need to be holding on this is the beginning of a new beginning and god is going to do what he promised he stands by his word so get ready thank you my son kyler for being in the house adrian thank you so much of course my wife dana marshall thank you so much uh, uh nolan pastor nolan thank you pastor gilbert what's up sarah thank you guys so much uh lynette mosley thank you thank you thank you pastor b thank you so much for being the house mom thank you so much now go share this i need y'all to be sharing this video with your people go share it go share it all while i am in this uplift i want you to continue to share i want you to continue to share this amen amen and then you go to my youtube page as well pastor g at network of believers and subscribe because i got some great things there now let's get into today the name of this video is called incredible love the, uh, this uplift is incredible love uh wrapped in amazing grace now i've been teaching this uh for the last uh uh three or four uplifts and 
the reason being is because this is the time of manifestation. And I told you on Monday, you will not transition into the place that God desires you to be if you don't understand your position. And the only way you're really going to fully grasp who you are is that you understand the love of God and his desire concerning you, that his love is unconditional. His love is 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 continual. It never ends. It's eternal. And it's none it's non judgmental. I know we encounter we have encountered representations of God that perhaps maybe they were going through something. I don't know. And and, and sometimes they just they give it to you based off how they feel. And if they're angry they they might be angry uh, uh, about something. They over have this overwhelming emotional feeling that God is angry too. And so sometimes they might say things to you that is completely nowhere God is. Now, this is very important. This is very important. And I'm not going to go in really deep. I do want to uh, to open up some things, but I want I want to I want to I want you to understand the basis of being into your future or getting into the wealthy place of God is that you understand what God is doing through dispensation. That is one of the, the, the basis of ever uh, 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 getting a, a, a mindset that will allow you to walk into greatness. I told you on Monday, there's many futures that are murdered by a mindset. Uh, they cannot transcend they cannot transcend from from one way that God uh, uh, acted or the way that God did things in one dispensation, as opposed to where He is now, and and we and, and we have for so long uh, 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 missed what God was doing and what God was saying. And and thank you, thank you, uh, 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 Doctor Ike and Pamela for being in the house. And so now He's bringing revelation so that we can understand that it is time to transition. And you're going to have to get the revelation or you're just going to be uh, uh, have a, a lot of um, talk. There's a lot of religious uh, verbiage that really does not carry weight in what God is doing in kingdom. It's just good for a good uh, a conversation amongst people that it feels good to say uh, the cliches. But what God is trying to do, he's trying to transition us uh, quickly into another level. Thank you, Donald into another level and it's going to be a, a, a challenge because it's so many times God is going to challenge you and when he challenges you it's going to be challenge against all that you think you know about him and sometimes that's the most difficult part for me to be able to let go of something old to grasp or to grab a hold to what is new in my life. That's the, always the greatest challenge is the, the challenge of letting go of something that I thought was everything to grab something that I know is what God has planned for me. And so I, I will have to allow God to show me my future in detail so that it won't, uh, uh, so that my past won't be able to compete. The reason why my past is still dominating my mind is because I don't see my future the way God wants me to see it. If I could get a, a picture of what God has planned in my future, man, I would literally say go, bye. <laughs> you know, I would say bye to the past and the hurts and the, and the pains of my past. So this is very important. Now this uplift, again, it's called incredible love wrapped in amazing grace. And I've been teaching this because there's people that are moving right now. God is God is coming to your door. He's knocking at your door again. You don't think that you deserve to open it. But if he's knocking, you deserve to open. And he wouldn't come knocking at your door if he didn't desire you. Don't let people talk you out of opening the door to your new life. And, and the enemy is smart. The, your adversary is smart. He'll use people that you trust to convince you not to open this new door. They'll tell you, I don't know, they're not all the time trying to trying to hurt you or hating on you. They're just telling you what they know. And sometimes it is not what God is saying. Now, now, now here it is, here it is, here it is. I am so excited. I am so excited. Thank you for your testimonies. Thank you for your your witness again. This is what Lunchtime Uplift is all about. I, I want people to believe again in spite of what they're going through. I want them to connect to God again. I want them to connect to the love that saves, that delivers, that gives new life. And that's the love of Christ. That's my agenda. 
I thank you guys for when I see you. You encourage me so much to go on. Sometimes you think you're just speaking idle words and people not listening until you run into somebody that say their life was changed forever. Their life was changed forever. And it's such a humbling moment but because it's not because of me. My desire is that people would just give God one more try. Give give Jesus another try. Just one more try. Just give him one more try. And and, and, and I, I thank you. I, I'm thankful because I believe that there are more of you that are listening again and going to give God a try. And I thank you for your testimonies, how lunchtime uplift has changed your life. But uh, I know that is not enough. It is, it is it is just not enough people. I want everybody to know that God loves you and he wants you to love him back. He wants you to have enough fortitude to say, if he loves me, I'm a, I'm going to love him back. I thank you. I had a young lady from, uh, from out of Georgia uh, wrote me a letter and told me, and this just touched my heart completely, that she had given up on God because she had an illness in her family. One of her kids was sick and uh, just didn't know why or how this happened. And so she said she was done with the God thing. And she said she uh, heard lunchtime uplift. Something was said in lunchtime uplift. Thank you, Leo, so much. And it changed her mind and gave, and, and she decided that she was gonna put it in the hands of God and give him another try. She said that some things were going on in all phases of her life that it was dark and she knew and she was having a problem with God because if I'm going through this, evidently he's angry at me. So I'm going to be angry back at him. We're going to go back and forth. Thank you. Thank you, my sister, Valerie. Thank you for being in house. Now watch this. But she said she's going to give God one more try. This is what I want you to do. Please give God one more try. Try it again. Don't you dare give up on God. Give him one more try. Allow him to do what he wants to do in his incredible love wrapped in amazing grace. Thank you, Donald. I see the hearts. I'm going to share your video again. Donald Randall is from Los Angeles, California. Lunchtime Uplift changed his life. Uh, that's his testimony. And I'm going to run his testimony again. I want to run his testimony again. But listen, and then she told me something very powerful. She says, as a matter of fact, not only did I reconnect to God, I believe that he had a future for me. And then she started sending me pictures of her new home that her, her husband and her child was moving into because she believed God again. She didn't believe me. She believed God. I'm just the vessel to point people to God. I'm here to tell you that no matter what you are going through, thank you, Paris, no matter how tough it is, stick with it. God is for you. He's not against you. He's not against you. You're going through things. And we all are. But 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 stay just don't give up on him. Just don't give up. Stay consistent. Thank you, Jose. Now share this. Go ahead. Share this. Share this because I'm about to get into the word. I'm about to get into the word. I'm about to get into something. I want to show you something. Your mind, this is where the, the battle is right here. You were alienated, as Paul says, in your mind. And I want to show you something in detail. What God is trying to do with you in this month of August in the manifestation month. Prepare. Thank you, Dermont. Prepare. 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 Now, I want to show you something because we are hearing, we are hearing again, and it's 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 a tool of the enemy. We're hearing again so much um uh talk about uh, how angry and and because of situations that are happening in the world today how angry god is and we have gotten mixed messages from the even the people that represent god or how angry he is but i want to take you really quickly through a passage of scripture because you are going to live again you're going to believe again you're going to trust god again according to your faith be it unto you your faith is going to be built again because if god said it about you he fully intends to bring it to pass yes it's been tough yes it's been rough yeah, you made some bad decisions, but that's life. And sometimes we do. So what do we do? We get ourselves up and we start again. And here's the thing that is so powerful about the get up. Here's something so powerful. When you are when you see the love of God, the incredible love wrapped in grace, it's about reconciliation and redemption. He's trying to bring you back. Sometimes you have to fall to realize that you had it all. This is this is our conflicts in life 
is God's tool to build a resume of, of confidence because when he brings you out of the conflict, you get confidence that he's God and he's able to pull me out. That's what he's trying to do. Re reconcile your mind back to the one that saves. That's why many are the afflictions of the righteous. Not of the evil, not of the bad, of the righteous. Many are the afflictions of the righteous. What, what the text says, but God brings us out of them all because our conflict is our God building a resume, a confidence. Confidence. Please. Denise says, we want to agree with Denise that God would bring her baby off the feeding tube. Let's believe with her. And we speak that, Denise, that God is going to heal your baby. This is what Lunchtime Uplift is all about. So, so, so here it is. Here it is. God is for you. His desire. Don't let people tell you he's trying to teach you something. Uh, and, and he's, 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 oh, man, I'm, I, this is a burden on my heart because I hear it so much. I hear people that life is destroyed by somebody that represent God and they are trying to live and they're just trying to get back on track and somebody comes and give them a word of destruction. Just, 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 I mean, thank you, Pastor Deidre. Just give them, just crush. And we say that we are the representation of God. God is not here to crush people. God is here to build people up. And his word is redemption and restoration. I Listen, I don't care. If you have fallen, God can restore. Yes, please hear me, those that, that, that are representation of God. Who does God look for? He look for people that are, just, that are crushed, that have made mistakes. That's who he is. He's not pushing no people out. He don't, he's not a God that have a club of people and say, these are the ones that are worthy for my life. No, he's looking for God so loved the world. He's looking for people that have been crushed. If you've been crushed by world, the world, give God a try. His love is here and is available for you no matter how many times you've fallen it is still available and he wants you to reconnect that's what this lunchtime uplift is all about now i wanted to deal with something i want to build your faith again because you're coming back you're coming back you've been knocked down but i'm here to tell you you're about to come up with something that you didn't go down with i'm gonna say it again you are about to come up with something that you did not go down with God is going to give you some power if you decide I'm going to get up again. So decide because you're going to come up with something that you did not go down with. God is for you. Now, let me read something here. And I'm, I'm, I love rereading scriptures. Perhaps you've heard several times and you had a perspective on it that didn't give, didn't give life. Well, the word of God is life. Yes, it gives life. It's not a death sentence. It's a life sentence. It gives life to the hopeless. It gives life to the messed up. That's what this word is all about. It's a redeeming, redemptive, reconciling word. And that's what I'm going to give you. Now, watch this. For those of you that heard people tell you, and they, they've been in a long time. They've been in longer than you, and they make you feel bad because you having problems. You got issues. You, 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 <laughs> you, you go through. But I'm here to tell you, <laughs> God loves you. Yeah, you go through, God loves you. I want to read something. Now watch this, Hebrews. This is the book of Hebrews. Hebrews, the first chapter. Hebrews, first chapter. This is a, this is the faith book, right? Uh, uh, Hebrews 1, verse 1. I want to read something for those of you who are hearing people that are that are telling you stuff that, you know, you, you it's over for you. Go ahead on and die. The Bible is about life. Watch this. God who at sundry times and in divers manners spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophet. You know what it said? God in diverse times, different times, and in different places in time past. In time past, uh, 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 spake unto us, uh, spake unto the fathers uh, by the prophets. He said God was speaking to the fathers by the prophets. You know, the Bible is a book of history. It's for our admonition and example. And it's given an example of how God was speaking to the fathers by the prophets. And we can read all through the kings and read about the prophets and all that, how God spoke. But here's the interesting thing. Verse two goes on to say, hath in these last days, hath in these last days spoken unto us by his son 
whom he had appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the worlds. He's in, he made the worlds by his son, which is the word. His son is the word personified. And as John says, the word became flesh and dwelt among us. Jesus. And, and, and notice what it says. It says, in past times, God says, Sunday times, the Bible's praises, would talk to our fathers through the prophets. But in these last days, now he's speaking to us through his son, Jesus, who the by whom the worlds were made. So your whole world, the framing of this new world or this new life is going to come through the love of Jesus. The un, the un, the unsearchable, the unconditional, uh, uh, the eternal and uh, unjudgmental love. That's what he's saying. He's going to speak to you through that route in these last time. Watch what it said. Third verse, who being the brightness of his glory, he was indeed God. Jesus, who's speaking to us, is indeed God, who was the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person. When he speaks Jesus, you are hearing God speak with all of his glory, is what the text is saying. Watch this. And upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sin, he died for our sins that we might be forgiven of all sin, set down on the right hand of the majesty on high. Wow. Now, now watch this. God in sundry times and in dire phrase spoke to our ancestors or our fathers. I'm breaking it down by the prophets. If somebody will come by your house. You might not have heard God and he sent a prophet so that you can finally get the word for the first time. Here it is, it says, but in the verse two says, hath in these last days spoken unto us by his son. Where does his son live? Inside of you. So he's speaking to you by this uh, incredible love wrapped in amazing grace that lives inside of you. Notice what the text says, says in these last days. Now let me break that down because perhaps we think last days, uh, we're thinking the days that uh, are, are about, everything's about to end. Well, let me explain. The last days that this text is talking about is the days of the Messiah. The Messiah. When Jesus came, it was considered the last day or the final day that you're going to live in. The day of the Messiah. And he's saying the days that you're living in now, he should be the voice that speaks to you. Now, God in sundry times and diverse places spoke to you by prophets. But now in these last, in these Messiah times, when Jesus ruled, he's speaking to you by his son which is the spirit of God that lives where inside of you. And you have an unction that's inside of you that perhaps somebody that's outside of you might not understand what the spirit inside you is saying. And they might be saying some things from their perspective that is outside of you and they're trying to cast it on you. Because they don't understand the work that the Holy Spirit is doing in your heart. And he's telling you that you win when they are looking at your outside telling you that you're a loser. That's all it's saying. Who being the brightness of his glory. This is the God himself that lives inside of you. Jesus made it very clear. John 16, he says it like this. He says, there's many things I would like to say to you. The flesh, Jesus, he says, but you are not ready to hear or you immature, you can't understand what I'm saying. But when he, the Holy Spirit comes, he's going to teach you all things. Where is he going to dwell? He's going to be inside of you. So there are some things that as you go along in life, you're going to learn. You're going to get it. You're going to, you're going to, you're going to follow on to know. People want you to be perfect, but Jesus understood there's some things you can't, you're not able to hear right now. And I'm going to take you into the place. Yes, there's modifications that's going to happen in all of our lives. But first of all, you must understand and comprehend that there's a love that is unconditional that want to first wrap his love around you before he start telling you all the things that you ain't doing and what you ain't capable of doing and why you can't do it. First, 
I've got to bask in the love so he can re-identify me. You'll never be identified or re-identified with confidence when you feel like there's conflict in the atmosphere. You never feel like you're loved when there's always conflict. And so the enemy is creating through, through wrong information, an atmosphere, a conflict, because he does not want you to fully understand and embrace the love of God that is unconditional toward you. Because he knows once you get in with your broken, messed up self, God identifies you as a son. Because the sun is living inside you. And then as time go on, he trains you. When people want you to be perfect, God says, no, I want to train you. And I want you to come and develop into all that I desire. As, as, as the script says in Galatians, it says, we are his workmanship. And then watch this, watch this. We are his workmanship created unto good works. Let's say it again. We are his workmanship created unto God. What does that mean, Pastor? I Meaning he's working on us. He is the one that can make us a, 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 a great work. Uh, uh, we are his workmanship created to, unto good work. If he don't do the work, then I'm never going to have good works. See, we thought that we were doing good works to convince him to be, uh, 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 to love us. No, it says we are his workmanship meaning if he don't take you in like you are when you're broken you have no chance of being whole that's why he always finds you when you were yet a sinner yet broken yet without understanding he commended his love toward you because you are his workmanship and since you were his workmanship now he says eventually he gonna create you unto good works he's gonna fix the messed up spots He's going <laughs> he's going he's going to work out those places that you're rough in. But the enemy has said tell you by somebody that you trust or somebody that you've always heard you ain't worthy of it. You ain't oh look at you. There you go again. There you go again. So God in sundry times and in diverse places spoke unto us by a prophet, but now in these last times hath he spoken unto us by his son. And he that son lives inside of you. So perhaps there is something that God is working out in you that he didn't give or make everybody privy to. Now, I know people get upset because they believe that if God said it to you, he would first have had to say it to them. Because, you know, you know, you know, you know, uh, God never does anything in the earth unless he reveals it to his prophet. And that's me. He's not going to do anything unless he reveal it to his prophet. Now, that is a passage in scripture that says that, but you got to read the context of the passage. God was telling Israel that he's about to do something. And they were saying, well, this is unfair for us to do. We didn't know. And he says, no, you know, you knew because I would never ever do any or make any move unless I pre-warned you. I would have told, I done told somebody, you just was not listening to me. And so that doesn't mean that he's isolating one superstar person to say God never does anything unless he tells me. No, he's just making an illustration that I never make a move unless I send to you first the idea that is coming. So you have no excuses when it comes. I just wanted to unpack that because we have taken things out of context and made superstar out of somebody. But Jesus just said, I'm going to speak to you about my spirit. If you'll take the time to listen, I know you thought you couldn't hear me. I know you thought that you were not in a position to hear me. Yes, you are. I want to talk. Per this is why we call it a personal relationship. If a relationship is personal, uh, that means that everybody might not be privy to the conversation. I, I, I admit, my wife and I have got a personal relationship. I'm not even going to tell. I'm not telling nobody what we talk about because it's personal. And that's the way God wants you to have is a personal relationship so that you can, um, have a personal conversation. It's, it's, it's really simple. Now, 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 now watch this. Uh, uh, in times past, diverse places, uh, uh, sundry places, diverse methods, he spoke. Now, that doesn't mean that God is not speaking today to prophets. By no stretch of the imagination am I saying that. Because uh, Jeremiah 3, I think it's 315. Yeah, 315 says something very powerful. I will give you pastors after my own heart. And they will give you uh, uh, knowledge and understanding. Knowledge and 
understanding. See, watch this knowledge and understanding. And so there'll be pastors. Why why didn't he say I give you prophets? I give you well, see, pastors are caregivers. They're people that to make sure that when you fall, they patch you up and put you back together and say, No, you gotta go another day. It ain't over. It ain't it, it's not over. It, 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 it ain't over yet. And and that's what I'm here to tell you today. It's not over for you. As a matter of fact, you just learn another lesson. Add that to your resume of confidence and get yourself together and get ready to move again. This is the month of movement. August is the month of excitement, manifestation. Get yourself ready to move. You you have you have a, 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 a cried over that thing long enough. Get up and get ready to go. If God has endorsed you, why are you worried about everything else? Get yourself up, get yourself ready, and be ready to lunch again. That's your word. Lunch again. So, so here it is. He, he, he's talking to us, speaking to us in the day of the Messiah, his son, Jesus. The Holy Spirit is in you and he's giving you unction. Don't let nobody talk you out of the greatness that you are because they didn't get the memo. They might not get. See, we've been seeking for people to give us validation. This stunts people's growth more than anything else is seeking validation. But it's difficult to get validation from someone that's seeking validation. If somebody don't have validation, or they seek it for validation, how can they validate you? It's going to be very difficult. Now, a title does not, uh, 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 it's not a picture of validation. No, 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 no. Not in any sense. A title is not. So, so in, in, instead of looking for people to validate you, God did that. He put you here. He says, before you entered the mother womb, Jeremiah, I ordained you. I sanctified you. I gave you all the tools needed to accomplish all I told you to accomplish. Now go after that. Don't say, don't look on their faces, Jeremiah. Stop looking at people. Stop wondering what they're thinking about what I said to you. Stop contending with people's thoughts. Stop. Just do and say what I said. They'll get it later, perhaps. And maybe they won't. But don't you stop doing what God has called you to do. Step out with boldness. Step out with boldness. Stop seeking for validation. You are, you, God is going to place you around people not to validate you, but to verify. And that's the difference. Validation and verification is two different things. Validation, you can't move until they give you the nod. They give you the, they give you the yes. <laughs> Verification comes in a different manner. Only people that, the only people that can verify are people that's been there. You got people speaking into you that ain't never been where you were trying to go. They just got a title and you think, well, since they got a title, that means that they, no, that doesn't. Man, that doesn't mean that. And anyway, uh, if you got the blessings of Abraham on your life, uh, Genesis 12, it says, Abraham, I will make your name great. I didn't think it said anywhere I'm going to make your title great. People pick up titles to become great. But God says, I make your name great. I make your person. I make your I make your uh, 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 person great. Not what you do, but your, your, your person. You are not what you do. You are who God called you. That's why Ruth told Boaz, I am Ruth. I'm not what I do. I am who God created me to be. That's who, that's who you are. So now we're coming back to identification. God is speaking to you very clearly by his son, uh, which you are a joint heir with. And he's telling you what I got. I'm, I'm making it available to you. Yes, I'm making it available to you. Now, uh, 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 if you go over one chapter, maybe two chapters, I will remind you of that son that I just wrote, just, just read about in scripture, who is the express image of God, who being the brightness of the glory and the express image of his person and upholding all things by the word of his power. When he had by himself purged our sins, he died for our sin, sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high. He went to God and sat down with your acceptance. <laughs> I'm going to say that again. <laughs> Here's Jesus who, 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 let me read again, being, bringing the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person. He's looked just like God. He's God in the flesh and upholding all things by the word 
of his power. He upholds everything. The worlds are framed by the word of God. He was the word made, made flesh, as John says, and he's holding up everything by the word of his power. Your life is guaranteed by what he says, in other words. And if he said that you could have it, you can have it, no matter what everybody else said and their, their naysaying and their negativity. If he said you can have it, he says it's yours for the having. Watch this. Uh, uh, when he had by himself purged your sins, by himself, he did the work. The work of the high priest has been done. And now what does he do? What does he do? He sat down on the right hand. The, the right hand is the, is the place of power. God's right hand is the place of power in scripture. Now he sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high. He's sitting at the right hand of power. He did the work for you to be forgiven of all your infractions. He's there now and saying that you are still qualified to believe that you can live life in spite of what everybody walking around you is saying to you. He sat down at the right hand of majesty. He sits on high. And he sees you from on high when everybody down here with you might not see nothing he sees. Now watch this. Here's the powerful thing about it. I'm going to go over just a couple of chapters. You win. You win. I'm going to go over a couple of chapters. This lunchtime uplift is an incredible love wrapped in amazing grace. Now watch this. I'm going to go over a couple of chapters to Hebrews 4 and to remind you in Hebrews 4 of something. Watch what Hebrews 4 says. It says, for we have not an high priest. Now remember, our high priest right now is sitting at the right hand of majesty and power to enforce the promise that God gave you. Get up now and start again. If you have failed, get up, start again. Because God, in this month of August, it's the month of excitement because of the manifestations that are going to happen this month. This is the month of your manifestation. Grab hold to that. Grab hold to that and set your expectancy on 10. Uh, as a matter of fact, start preparing now for the manifestations of God in this month of August 2018 is the month of your change. This is the month of your chain. Don't you dare let anything come out of your mouth that opposes the blessings of God because you cannot have what you speak against. This is one of the this is one of the greatest rules in scripture. You cannot you cannot have what you speak against. This is why I see so many people that are skeptics that call themselves uh, 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 by the name of God that is defying something, a miracle in your life. And sometimes we listen to them say that can't happen. That can you got to work. You better work your finger to the bone. And then, well, I'm here to tell you, I'm here to tell you, and you can believe what you want. Don't you dare talk against that supernatural. We will not sacrifice the supernatural on the altars of academics. We will not. This is a month. What you cannot have, what you talk, be very careful. If, if if somebody says something and you say, man, that that's that's incredible. That's hey, what do you have to lose? Believe. Believe. Only believe. Don't you dare talk against something because you cannot have what you speak against. Now watch this. Let's go back. For we not have not an high priest. We have not a high priest. Remember, he's sitting at the right hand of power. Uh, 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 the, uh, the right hand of majesty and power to endorse and to enforce all that he said about you. He's there. He says, it's by the power of my word. And we know that his word will not ever return unto him void. It will accomplish. And he's sitting there to ensure that for those that can believe, you will receive the manifestations of God of all the things that he said about you. And so he says, for we have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities. In other words, he's touched by the things you're going through. In other words, if you didn't have no infirmities, he wouldn't have wrote it in there. If you didn't have some issues, he wouldn't have wrote it in there. As a matter of fact, the text said he feels you because that's who he is. He the one that feels when you are ill or when you're going through or when you are at disease because of the life uh, trauma and, and traps and things that you go through. That's what this is all about. Now watch, 
we got a high priest that are touched with the feelings of our family, but was in all points tempted like we are, oh, like we were. When he was in the days of his flesh, he felt the same thing because he wanted to be able to identify. And he was touched at all points because he did not want you to come to him with anything that he never experienced because before you give grace, you got to experience grace. That's, 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 that's always. You got to experience grace before you administer grace. Let me give you a rule about grace. Grace will never leave and it will remain as long as Jesus remains. That's the rule about grace. So some people say you're going to take the grace away from me. Grace will never be moved or it cannot be moved unless Jesus is moved. One more time. The only way grace can be taken is that Jesus is taken. Now, who... Is, is 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 bad enough, if you will, or, 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 or bold enough to walk up to the right hand of majesty. And, and <laughs> it's just, I'm just, I want you to think, who, 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 now, the, not the devil. We know it ain't the devil because uh, he already knows. <laughs> he, you know, the Bible says when Legion saw Jesus, he came and he bowed down quickly. And said, I'm worshiping you because you are the man. So who would be bold enough, as long as Jesus remained, grace remained, who you think is bold enough to go to the right hand of majesty? As uh, as uh, uh, Hebrews 1, 3 said, he's sitting in the power in the right hand. Who would be bold enough to dare try to go and take him out of position? Certainly not the devil because he already knows. Well, there are some that will try and they, and they speak. <laughs> they will tell you the devil already got the memo that there's there's he, he already knows that, that he's not in any 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 place or condition to even compete as a matter of fact he bows down but there are some that'll speak out of their mouth a dare go to the place to take grace out of your life and they'll do it trying to use the word that gives you grace <laughs> <laughs> it's funny it's incredible but they do it every day they tell you oh god is about done god is god is about done with you god is oh god oh my god god I'm, i see you there oh there you go again god is a numbers twenty three nineteen says god is not a man god is not a man he's not moved by the things that's got you messed up he's not emotional He's not emotional. He's not an emotional distraught right now because things are so out of control. Whoo, he better do something. <clears throat> Your God is not a reactor. That's that's revelation there. He does not react. He's proactive. He does not react to anything. What you are all stressed out about, he's not stressed out about it. And that gives him confidence because I got one that masters my mess and he's not stressed out about it. There's a plan that assures me safety if I hear him and stop listening to these people that are trying to pull me out of my place in God. Mm -mm. You, can fall, you can't fall out of grace. Only thing you can do is fall into grace. And there's people that try to pull you out of it, but they can't do it. 16 verse says, let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace. Let us come boldly. Listen to me. Hey, listen to me. Come boldly back to God. <laughs> yeah, come boldly. You're trying to figure out something that you were never outfitted to figure out. You were never, God never intended for you to try to figure out this mess. Yeah, you you did the work and you you did the deeds that got you there. And he knows it. We have not a high priest that have not been touched with the feeling, or cannot be touched with feeling of firm, that have not in all points been tempted. Yeah, you did what it took to get you here. But there's only one thing. Even though you've done the work to get you there, you can't do the work to get you out. There's only one rescuer. There's only one redeemer. There's only one reconciler. That's Jesus himself. The enemy will tell you, I know you got yourself into that mess. Now get yourself out. No, no, no. I'm going to boldly come to the throne of the one that's got a plan. That's greater than my plan. My plan got me here. His plan brings me out. 
Are y'all here? My plan got me there. His plan brought and brings me out. That's what he's trying to get you. Thank you, Chantel. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Jessica. Right now, watch this. I'm not done yet. I'm not done yet. I'm not done yet. There is so much more for this time and season in your life. If you can have the audacity to believe God in spite of what you've been suffering through and what you've done and how many times you messed up, he's going to reward you for your faith. He's going to reward you for making the uh, taking the initiative to, to stand up again. It's going to take some work for you to stand up again. Man, you've been beat up. You've been talked about by people that don't have a clue what your what your dilemmas are. They don't care, really. <laughs> they don't even care to know. They just need somebody to talk about. That's all, that's all it is. But here it is. This month of August, the first day of August, you are going to get up again. You're going to start over again. You're going to have the audacity to believe God. Thank you, Tawana, Stephen. You're going to get up with the audacity to believe God again. And you're going to get up and, and say, in spite of all I've been through, in spite of the times that I've fallen down, in spite of uh, 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 the mess up in the miscues, let me say it one more time. Many are the afflictions of the righteous. I know they told you that it was because God was angry because of something you've done that you were going through. Many are the afflictions of the righteous. Yeah, if you're righteous, you're going to be afflicted with things. Why? Because your conflicts are God is a tool in God's hand to build your confidence. He brings you through. He brings you through so that you will be prepared for the next challenge in your life. And you are going to be challenged in your life because challenges are segues to champions. And for champions, challenges are segue for a champion. That's all God is trying to get you to see. And he has to build your confidence because you're going to have to fight a champion. I always think about uh, this, this, this. I've been using this particular story uh, uh, much here lately about David. If Goliath was not in David's uh, path, he would have been just known as a shepherd boy. Nothing unique about a shepherd boy. But since he faced the challenge that was issued, uh, challenges are issued, that's number one, but they have to be accepted. Just because he accepted the challenge, this Goliath gave him a new position called king. This is why the enemy want to beat you down in your mind, because he wants you not to take the challenge. Don't fight as a shepherd boy. Fight as a king. Because just the fact that you accepted the challenge will catapult you. Don't look at all of the things that you were. Think about what this is going to bring. And that's why you got to see your future much clearer than you've seen your past. The Bible says that Goliath was a champion. And to go to champion status, you're going to have to face a champion. You, 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 are, you, you are facing unusual challenges from a champion. Now, un interesting, because if you read in scripture, uh, the Bible never titled any other man other than Goliath champion. No, nobody, nowhere else in scripture is, 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 is um, uh, someone called a champion. And that's interesting that this challenge that David faced, uh, being a, just a lonely shepherd boy that had been uh, uh, put uh, put to the side or placed or taken for granted. The only reason why he's there is because he's taken some some uh, 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 cheese uh, to his brother and some food to his brother. That's all, and to bring report back to his father of how the battle is going. That's the only reason why he was there. But uh, 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 or at first appearance, in other words, uh, uh, he was just there by chance. But we know that we never live life by chance. We always live life by choice. Uh, uh, the fact that Jesse, his father, called him and told him to go to the battlefield and there was no fight yet was a sign that uh, there's a lot of people that might already be in position, but it's not for them 
to to face the challenge that you're about to face because this challenge brings another position called champion. And so David comes on the scene at the right time. It's, it's not by chance that he shows up when this uh, champion, the Philistines, start breeding out the threats and then start uh, and saying what the reward is going to be for winning. And this is important that you know it was he was called a champion, and, and the reason why he was called a champion is because Goliath was a master in three different areas of battle or, 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 or war or combat. And here's the three different places he was he was an expert in the spear, the javelin, and sword. Expert in the spear the javelin and the sword. That's why he was called a champion. He had trained. Remember, uh, Saul told David, you're trying to fight a, you just a boy trying to fight a man that's been fighting since he was a boy. He's a champion. He's a master marksman. He's master at everything that he does. He's a champion. And here's David facing a champion. And here's what you're about to face moving forward. Please hear me in this month. A, a, a challenge that's going to catapult you into champion. You're you're a master. You're 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 challenged by a champion. And as 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 Goliath was a master in sword, spear, and javelin. Here's what the your challenge is. There's some things that's trying to master your family. There's some things that's trying to master your health. And there's some things that's trying to master your finance. And you're coming up against those things and you're about to defeat everything that came against your family, everything that came against your finance, and everything that came against your health. You're about to take this giant down and you're about to move into the greater life. Don't run from the challenge. Face it because it might not look like it to other people. But when you come to the battlefield, with the plan and purposes of God, you've got all everything you need when you get there. You brought it to the battlefield. They might not see it, but God planned this the whole time because it's not by your strength or your power. It's by the purposes of God in your life that he, he equipped you with something that nobody else could recognize. He equipped you with something everybody else has discredited. He equipped you with something that only you have you have proved. So don't you relent when other people tell you how to do it, when to do it, and, and tell you you can't do it. You've already been equipped to face the champions that are challenging you in your life. And you will make it through this challenge just like you have all the rest. The bear in your life, as David said, I, I faced the bear, I faced the lion. I overcame them. You didn't think I was going to overcome that. But my conflicts uh, was a tool of God to build my confidence because he knew when I didn't know, he knew Goliath was coming, the ultimate challenge. So he's already built me, built a resume that says I can face this too and I will and I will win. You got to say it with me. I will and I win. I will and I win. I'm going to face the challenge and I'm going to defeat it. I will and I win. Let's pray together. Man, Father, I thank you today for this word. Thank you for the listeners of this word. Thank you for your incredible love wrapped in amazing grace that allows me to blurt it out, shout it out. I will and I win. I face my challenges. I overcome my challenges. And it allows me to walk into the position of champion. I champion every challenge that I face because of the power that you've given me and the purpose that now I understand. I'm putting aside all of the naysayers, all of the people that's trying to talk me out of it. Won't be talked out of it this time. I'm moving forward in grace. I'm moving forward in your grace. You're going to give me knowledge and understanding. There are some moments, God, that we're going to face that we have no idea what to do. But just because I move forward, your spirit that lives inside of me is going to speak to the situation. Take no thought what you should think as scripture said, but in that very moment, you're going to speak out of me. You're going to give me the very answer for that moment. And I thank you for that grace. I thank you for that grace. I walk confidently in your word. Everything that you said, I'm going to get in Jesus name. Amen. Everything. Don't you relent. Don't you give up now. You're going to have people saying, 
You're going to have people saying, oh, you can listen to that if you want to. But I'm here to tell you, you're going to hell. <laughs> oh, man. But anyways, if you can stay focused on what God is saying, God will give you, he'll train you in a way. Paul, I'm not you down. I'm going to give you the training on the way, on route to new purpose. God will train you in route to your new purpose. So stop, stop letting people talk you out again and again and again. Of this greatness that you were born with. You were born. You were born to win. That's what you were placed here for. You're a winner. You were born to win. 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 Winners are going to win. And you're a winner. So you were born to win. Amen. Thank you. I got done early today. I'm going to cut it off because I don't want to start into something else. So so, so I am thankful today. I, I, do me a favor. Please do me a favor. Go to my YouTube page, Pastor G at Network of Believers. Go and subscribe. Not only, not only watch, but subscribe. I want you to subscribe. I want you to connect with me, Pastor G at Network of Believers. You can follow me on Twitter at Pastor G, the number four in OB. Let's connect. I want to connect with you. I want to connect with you. So go there and subscribe. Everyone that's under the sound of my voice, you should have by now subscribed to my YouTube page. It don't cost anything. It's just that anytime I put a video there, and I do do videos that are not live, I just share some nuggets uh, to encourage you during the day or during the week to stand up. Don't let it take you out. Just stand strong. The fact that you stand, you have the audacity to face it. You have power to overcome it. That's all it is. And the word of God is very important in those moments of standing. And there again, I want to see more people win now than ever. You deserve to win. You deserve to have life. You don't deserve to be broken. You don't deserve to be distraught. You don't deserve to to, to be battling all the time with things uh, uh, that you think that you can't win. Your mindset is going to change. God created you as a winner. God created you as a winner. You are a winner. You are a winner. You are a winner. Man, you you are you are a winner. Man, you are. You are. You are. You are a winner. You are a winner. Don't you ever accept losing as an option. You are a winner. Quitting is not an option on the table for you. So you might as well uh, strap it up, get it ready again, and go back again. Because you're going to take this giant down this time. Amen. I mean, you agree with that? I hope you agree with that. Don't talk against, don't speak against what you can't see right now. Keep speaking words of faith that defy the current situation. Just keep saying, I will. I will. Go back again. Face it all over again. I will. I will this time. I will. I'm going back again. I'm getting back up again. I'm going back. Nothing is going to stop me in this season. I might not be everything everybody else is, but I'm enough to do what God told me and he'll build me in the process. Thank you guys so much. For those of you that want to sew into this, uh, my wife, Teresa Divine Whitmore, she's got an address there. It's uh, N-O-B-C, N-O-B-C, the cash app, N-O-B-C, simple, N-O-B-C. Amen. Thank you guys. Thank you, Paris, so much. Thank you, uh, uh, Raquel, for being on Tamika's uh green uh uh phone thank you so much thank you so much especially my wife uh nitra thank you so much donald randall bernadette pastor deidre sarah catherine coney uh who else is in there? pamela prophet pamela thank you so much thank you guys james abson abston thank you so much uh miss lisa mate uh miss lisa uh uh, Mac, Miss Lisa Mac, thank you so much for being in the house. Thank you guys so much for being here. I always acknowledge people. Why? Because people, you could be doing so many other things, but you decided you were going to be in lunchtime uplift. I am grateful. I am grateful. I am grateful to people. I am so thankful for you being in the house. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Who else is in the house today? Uh, who else is here? Uh, Tawana Steve, thank you so much. Margaret Higgins, Run the World, thank you so much for being in the house. Chantel, uh, Jessica Reina, thank you so much for being in here today. 
uh, who else? Uh, uh, Ladon Moses. Thank you so much, man, for being in the house. Who else? Uh, uh, Katrina Robinson. Thank you so much, Katrina. Uh, Denise. Uh, uh, we praying for Denise. Uh, uh, she said her baby is on a uh, ventilator. I think that's what she said. I need y'all to pray with her. We can agree that God heals her baby. I believe. Thank you, Tammy, so much. And for everyone else that was in, I believe that God is a healer. And we're speaking that, that God is going to heal her baby. Amen? It's dark because I got agreement from believers. All right. I'm out of here. I will see you guys uh, uh, Friday, Friday, 12 noon. See you right here, Friday, 12 noon. Pastor G is out. Love you guys. Holla.